So Python has uh, four layers of uh, variables. So we have built-in, um, built-in with like true, false, you know. So there we have global variables, which I already told you, like uh, which are in IPython x equal to five. That will be global. In closing, I'm going to make it clear in, a, in, a, in by an example and local. So local is uh, inside the function. Whatever is defined inside the function is for local variable. Okay, so in closing, I am going to show you. Okay, so these three have fair idea, but let's see what is in closing. So this is an example. So it has all sorts of variables. Okay, uh, three of them, not global. Uh, true is a global variable. True, false. So x global is hundred. Okay, so it's outside uh, any function, so it is a global. Then outer, def outer, x in close equal to ten. Okay, so outer as a function, within that I defined a variable x enclosed whose value is 10. But within outer, I define another function, inner, def inner. So this is defined inside outer, okay? So x local is one. Then, uh, so there are three types of variables, see? x local, x enclosed, in, enclosed and x local. Okay. So uh, local is available only inside this function inner. It is not available uh, out. In fact, is not. You can't print here. A X local cannot be printed here. Okay, but print X enclosed as well as X local here. It is impossible. It cannot be done. It is not visible outside. Okay, so this is local scope. This is enclosing scope and the global scope. Within inner, all three are very, uh, accessible. That means I mean with some limitations. Uh, we can see them. We can't operate on them very easily, but we can see them. So I can print x local, I can print x, x enclosed and x global inside inner, but I cannot print x local here. Okay, so this is called scope. So inner guy can access all the outer variables, but not uh, outer guy cannot access inner variables. Okay. Now uh, within this function outer, I execute inner. Okay. So this is part of the definition. Uh, this inner is inside uh, this. So please see the indentation. Huh? So there are two spaces I put here, two spaces. Uh, so all these are these uh, six lines are within outer definition. So when I execute outer bracket open. So I'm executing outer function. Okay, this one. Uh, and of course it doesn't take any argument. In fact, it doesn't have any return. It's only print. This is a strange function, it just prints. So what is it going to do? Outer is going to compute this file, well, execute this, put 10. Then it will execute inner. These are definitions. So it is not, uh, well, I mean, these are definitions. So it'll call inner. So it goes inside and x local equal to one and then start printing. So x local equal to one, which is printed here. x encloses 10 x global is 100. Okay. So anyway, this is an illustration of this layers of variables or variables of different scope. Okay. So th this is called scope. What is the scope? Uh, so this is a local scope, this is an enclosing scope, and the global scope. I hope this part is clear. Let's go to another example. So we have a uh, same example, but uh, I just put same variable name x, x, x. Okay. Now, uh, when I say print x in, inside local, uh, inside the inner function, inner function, what, what do you expect? Which x will it print? Okay. Now it has accessible, uh, it has access to all three. Uh, it knows 100, it knows 10, uh, as well as one. But first it sees locally what is available locally. So if you want something, you go to a local uh, shop, you find that first. If you don't find, then go outside. Uh, go to the outer, I mean, go to this part, enclosing. And if you don't find even here, then go outside. Okay, so that's a, a search thing. So first local, enclosing, global, then built in. That's how you go. So it's going to print x equal to 1. 
okay it's uh, um, so this is how you search for a variable now in uh, in c would have been more i mean c also has this kind of features um, yeah so well this part is similar to c uh, one important difference is that we don't define these variables uh, these are all uh, so we have objects these objects are more important 100 is an object i give a label x now in c it is a, a variables are defined first so in text x takes value 100 uh, i cannot put 100.0 on that variable x because uh, once you define the type of variable it can take only certain values but uh, python is very different in terms of uh, variable uh, manipulation or variable uh, functions uh, how it how they work Okay, passing arguments. Uh, this is a bit tricky, so please pay attention to this part. Um, so, I'll just turn off this part. So, see some slightly strange things will happen. So, a def test function x. So, I have a defined a function. So, it takes x as an argument. Okay. Now, print inside function. So, these are this is string. So I print x and id of x. Okay? So just keep in mind. I mean, these are just to uh, tell where this uh, x is being printed. Now I redefine x, which is passed as the argument, to 999. Then inside the function, after this assignment, what's value of x and id x? Okay. So I do this uh, another thing. So uh, I do two prints. So print x first. As soon as the parameter is passed, then uh, reassign x, then print x. Now I'm going to use this function, okay? Call this function. So a is 100.0. IDFA is this. Okay? Now I, I call this function test function with a is argument, okay? Now a is 100.0. Now some of you who do not know programming, uh, please keep in mind that. When I call, this x need not have the same name here. No? Um, uh, I can put anything here. I mean, I can put uh, a number um, or I can put a variable. So this value of a will go and replace x. In Like in C or Fortran. But there are some subtle differences. Okay. Um, so with that is what I'm going to show you. So a is 100, no? So when you print x, yeah, I'll get 100.0, of course, here. And id is id of uh, x. Okay. Now you see this id of a uh, and id of x inside the function are the same. This is the key point. This this function. So it's not that this a is copied into a new variable called x. It is using the same object 100.0. Okay, that's where mutable and immutable all the things become clear. Um, uh, I have a picture in the next slide, so that will make it more explicit. But it's the same object 100, which is accessed from outside as well as inside. Now, as soon as I change it to 999, I do this, then my ID of X has changed. So this ID is different than this ID. So now new object has been created and that point, I mean, X points to that object, 999. And uh, this is inside the function. Okay. Now I come out of the function. I mean, this uh, function execution is over, print A and ID of A. So, what it, so A remains unchanged because when you made, when, when you altered X, it doesn't mean that A which is outside is also altered. This is a new object to which x points, and this x has nothing to do with a. x is local, x is inside. So whatever you do inside the function does not alter the global variable a. So this variable a has value 100, and its id is exactly same as before. So it's the same object, and a is not changed. Okay. Now uh, I just this same function I illustrated here. So uh, this was 100, you know, a is 100. And uh, when I call this test function, x points to 100. 
okay uh, and uh, uh, when i made this change to 999.0 i forgot so x now points to this new object 999 okay and this id is different than this id uh, i hope this is clear i mean is there i describe in detail in my notes but uh, uh, you have to just pay attention to this part so x points to a uh, here x points to a but once it is changed then it points to x points to a new object but this creation does not affect this okay now uh, this for float and integer okay uh, this for float and integer uh, these are immutable objects it also happens for string but when you have a list then things will be different so i'm going to come to that uh, in a minute so i give another example def mult a is a comma b so uh, i multiply a and b and return okay so i take i send both a and b and i return a so let's take x equal to 3 and mult x comma 4 okay so i push in uh, this x as a as a argument so x will basically uh, replace a okay so this becomes 3 and uh, b is 4 so answer will be 12 right but now x has become 12 in well a has become 12 sorry not a a x a has become 12 now does it mean that x also has become 12 what is value of x after this x was a parameter which is passed in uh anyone can make a guess is it 3 or is it 12 please so answer is 3 because a is a local variable okay uh, when i made a change in fact a will be a new object 12 will be created and it doesn't change x okay x is unaltered okay x is a immutable variable uh, and this is uh, not going to affect x okay so uh, because x is a global scope and a is a local scope now for arrays i create a new array a which is 4,8 and i call the same function that's the beauty of python uh, this parameters do not have a type so as long as uh, valid operations are possible it will just take any any value you want to assign it to parameter so a will take value for it no problem and uh, multiply 4 into uh, 4 16 and 4 into 8 32 and what happens to a after this if i print a then what is going to happen is the, the list is a, a array and list are mutable objects so a is when i pass it a is altered okay so a does not remain the same a is changed so this where the understanding mutable and immutable uh, is important uh, integer and float will not change uh, will remain as before but uh, array will change or list will also change if i make some changes inside the function okay now uh, i have illustrated by another example uh, i have a function called change array x it takes a array as input or list as input and i change the first element to 100 so uh, when i pass uh, well i mean i didn't write it here the change array b when i say change array b uh, call so b is my uh, my list 1 2 3 now uh, x will point to that when when it comes here line 0 you we'll say just right now as soon as you put x0 is 100 x is changed inside as well as outside well basically the point is is a same object you should think of object is most important thing in python so this object is changed is the same address you see is the same object they are not two different object in fact i should have uh, i you can just remove one and make it 100 so why is it done because you see the list could be big it could be one million elements and if i make change to one element it doesn't mean that i'm going to make a new object i don't want to make a new copy of million elements so list remains list is the same object i make few changes in some elements 
that's what is done. Okay. Um, so there's one one little different which I in fact I I could uh, argue here. I mean I could just say that yeah. Uh, if I had made x equal to x square, okay, instead of x equal to 100, if I said x equal to x square, then it will be a new object. x square is a new object. x star star 2. Then it won't be the same address. No? It will be, so if I square, then I'm changing all the elements, so that will make a new object. But if you change few elements, then it is not a new object. It's a subtle thing, but uh, important. Uh, manipulating global variables. Uh, so I have access to that uh, global variable. So it's a very it's slightly subtle here as well. So count five is a global variable. Okay? Count equal to five. So count has value five. So I call a function def f count equal to count plus one. Now if I print count, it will print five, no problem, right? Because inside the function I can I have access to the global variable, but I cannot change it. I cannot alter that count, so it will give an error. This is not allowed. However, if I pass that is a parameter count, then count equal to count plus one. So inside the count becomes six, but what is the value of count outside? If I say print count outside the function, then what is the value? It's five. five. It doesn't change. It's a count is a global ob uh, object. Uh, and uh, whatever I do inside to the same. So when I do this, in fact, this six is a new object okay, and doesn't change this object five. So count remains five. But if you want to change this count to six. Then what should I do? I mean, from within the function, from within the function, actually the typo, I should fix it, I keep forgetting. So I define global, so g, g should be small, okay? This g should be small, global, count, and count equal to count plus one. Now, value of, so I print count outside the function after executing, huh? so I say f count. And uh, after the print count, that will be, Six because I said that this count is global, and whatever changes I make here now will affect the global count. And uh, so, uh, this is a subtle part you can make the changes to global variable, and uh, uh, that's how you have to just declare that is a global variable. 